I'm 26 now and living in Pennsylvania, but when I was growing up, I lived in Montpelier, Vermont. My summers were spent hiking mountains, swimming in lakes, and exploring expansive forests. I knew that my state had bears and rattlesnakes in its more secluded, mountainous regions, but I never imagined that there was anything more terrifying than those out there. When I was 19, my friend Emily and I went to Moss Glen Falls for a day of swimming and picnicking, and it gave us a nice change of scenery from campus. The waterfall is located in Stow, which is a remote town in Vermont that has a population of barely 4,000. Emily was from another state and had never really seen much of the area beyond our college campus, so I figured showing her some of Vermont's quaint locations was in order. The day was perfect. We had packed plenty of food, sunscreen, and towels, and since it was a weekday afternoon, there was no one else at the falls except for elderly couple who left not long after we got there. We spread our towels out on a large rock by the falls and alternated between climbing up the waterfall edges to get to the swimming pools and relaxing in the late afternoon sun. It was peaceful and it was the perfect break for a long day of homework and classes. As the day wore on, Emily wanted to explore some of the trails near the falls. I was familiar with a few of them and I tried to keep her on those. What I didn't account for was that she would insist on exploring some of the more outlying trails and that we would consequently get lost. We spent nearly an hour walking in circles, our arms and legs getting covered in mosquito bites and our bathing suits drying uncomfortably onto our skin. We had the flashlights in our phones to give us a little light once the sun set but they didn't do much to illuminate the dense undergrowth shrouding both sides of the trail. Finally, we came across a blackberry patch that we were pretty sure we had seen earlier, so by logical default, we started heading down the path closest to the bushes. Emily kept asking me if I heard twigs snapping behind us, and I brushed it off as a city girl being afraid of deer or rabbits. I didn't hear anything myself, so I figured she was feeling paranoid due to it being her first time lost in the woods. Then I heard it. The noise came from somewhere behind us, and it was too loud to be a small animal like a rabbit. I figured it was another person out walking, or maybe a herd of deer passing through. Stow has never been a populous town, and the locals could argue that there's more deer here than people. I ignored the uneasy feeling, building in the pit of my stomach, and kept walking chalking it up to my friend's paranoia rubbing off on me, and I babbled senselessly about cute guys to keep Emily and I distracted. After about 10 minutes of walking back to the car, we finally came in sight of the trailhead. There was a large boulder where the plaque was on it dedicated to a young woman who had been murdered at the falls back in 1991, and right beyond that was my car. As we neared the boulder, relief evident on Emily's face a weird noise came from the woods behind us. It sounded almost like a cat, but it was distorted and static, like it was coming out of an old radio. My first instinct was the fact that the cat was wounded or in danger. I've always been an animal lover and if there was a hurt cat I wasn't about to leave it out there to become a coyote snack. I turned around ignoring Emily begging me to just get in the car and peer back into the trail. I gave Emily the keys and told her to get our towels, now that we knew where we were, and I promised I'd be back momentarily. If I didn't find the cat right away, I wasn't going to spend forever looking for it, but I couldn't just drive away either. With the loss of the second flashlight, the woods seemed to be a bit more eerie to me, and the darkness was nagging at my peripheral vision. I walked a little ways down the path as I called to the cat, hoping to locate it by its meow, but I didn't hear anything for several moments. I was about to give up when I heard a low, out of place laugh behind me. I spun around, my heart beating way too fast, but all I saw was a large buck. I remember muttering something, something stupid, sneaky deer, then I headed back to the trailhead. That was when the deer laughed again and I froze. The harsh sound was completely unnatural. 
For those of you who do not know, deer don't make sounds like that. They just make grunts. They don't make any sort of laughter-like noises, and even if they did, it wouldn't have the same cadence as a human's laugh would. And as this deer, it had a human laugh. This situation was weird and unnerving, and I kept hoping that someone would pop their head out from around a tree and tell me it was a prank. That didn't happen though. The deer took a few steps towards me, and then the odd cat sound came from it. I almost literally threw my hands up in a nope gesture and I just started walking away from it as quickly as I could. I was almost in sight of the end of the trail when I felt something snag my hair. I swatted it away, thinking it was a branch since there was a lot of low hanging trees along the trail, but the sensation turned instantly. I reached up to tug my hair free, but it wouldn't come loose. I turned to face the offending tree, my heart thumping in shock. The deer was now on its hind legs. It had my hair caught in one of its antler points. The snarls from a day of swimming and hiking were entangled around its antler. All I could do was just stand there as I felt its cold breath on my face. It was not warm, and it was not hot, but icy cold breath reefed around me. I let out the most shrill scream I had ever heard myself make and I violently yanked my hair off its antlers. I sprinted for my car, screaming the whole way for Emily to start it. I heard the engine turn when I neared the boulder, and she didn't hesitate to floor it as soon as I was in the car. The tears streaming down my face were enough motivation. She didn't question me until we were nearly five miles from Moss Glen. I told her about the weird noises and the deer getting up in my face. I told her it startled me and that on top of that the stress of being lost was just enough to make me panic. She bought my explanation, agreeing that we were both super tired, and adding that my mind was probably playing tricks on me. I haven't returned to Stow since then, even though I have visited Vermont recently. I know there's probably some sort of rational explanation for what I saw and what I heard that night, but I haven't been able to find what that could be. Let me just say, I'm a sucker for the paranormal. I have tons of encounters with ghosts, poltergeists, monsters, etc. But this is one of the scariest. I have grandparents. I love them. My mom usually leaves me with them if she is gone for a few days. And one day this happened. I was at my grandparents' place and I was home alone. It was at least 8pm. I was sitting on my computer and doing homework. You know, all the stuff that teenagers do. I was going downstairs to get something to drink, when I heard what sounded like footsteps, not in my house but outside. I was scared because I watched way too many scary stories tonight, but I didn't want to be a wuss and thought it most likely was my neighbor's dog or something, so I went back to doing homework. But what I saw in my window was no dog. It was all black and tall, really tall at least 12 feet. Me, an 11 year old boy, 36 kilograms and 5 feet, there was no way I could fight it. I stared at it for a minute, but it felt like it was an hour, then it jumped out of the window to my backyard, and then I heard my grandfather's voice, Damas, that's my name in Lithuanian. He gives us the key to the door, we forgot it, I was scared but relieved. My grandparents came back and I was safe. But then I remembered my grandparents locked my door. They did have the key and it was only 8pm. And they weren't supposed to be back until well after 9. I took my GoPro with that stick thing you attached to it and I started filming. I regret the decision with all of my life. Whatever it was, took the camera and started pulling me down. I struggled and yanked the camera back. Then I heard the thing go back somewhere else, out of my yard. I was very thankful for God that I survived. I called the police and showed them the footage and they kind of believed me, I think. They left a man with me until my grandparents returned. My grandparents returned and I showed them the footage and they soon moved out. That place is now abandoned and I miss that place. Sometimes I still go there but I always bring some kind of protection. 
I learned about the paranormal and I think I encountered a Wendigo. My name is Paul. I live in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. I have always believed in the paranormal and cryptid since I was a kid. I never experienced anything strange until recent years. For more backstory, I just turned 19. I'm a male standing about 6 foot 8 and weighing in at 260 pounds. So, I'm a fairly big guy and nothing scares me really. What does scare me though are stories of skimwalkers and the dogman. I have heard stories from my indigenous friends for a while now of a creature known as the Rougarou. I have heard of it before from documentaries, so I had an idea of what it was. I never doubted their stories. One time, I remember that it was stalking one of my friend's homes on their reservation. She was down the block from her house when she saw it, but I don't remember the details that well. She told me a long time ago. If you guys want, I'll have her write it down and I'll submit it to the channel. But my story begins about three years ago. So, when I was about 16, around the end of summer, I was at a friend's house. We were just hanging out and playing video games. We stayed up until about 1 or 2 in the morning, but I had to get home because I had to do things the next day. I rode my bike over to his house, so I had to get home using that. I live 30 minutes away, but to me on bike that's like 10 minutes if I ride the pass that I take home. It takes me down this really long street that's basically a straight shot to my house. To the left of me is a really big park. It's not lit at all, and on the right, there are houses. I've always felt like I was being watched in that area, especially near the park with no lights. Like, I mean, it's always pitch black at night, even in the city. I always bike there by myself, and nothing ever happens. But this night was different. I could feel it. I felt like I was being stalked, so I started biking faster. My bike is a double disc, so it's not a slow bike by any means, and I swear to God I looked over at the park and saw what seemed to be a dog running at me, but it was much bigger than any dog I've ever seen in the area, so I started pedaling away. I started pedaling harder and harder and I threw my bike's gear all the way up to 8 and went my fastest, never stopping but I never heard it running beside me in the park, like it didn't want to be in the light. I got to the end of the street and turned onto the sidewalk that went under these train tracks. I looked behind me. It stopped under the tracks and stared at me as I biked away, but I got a good look at it, and my heart sank. It was now standing on its hind legs, and just standing there at the point that I see that this is no dog. It was bulging with muscles, and it had a human shape, but with a dog head and legs, its arms were the scariest. They were long and had dagger-like claws. Its breathing was ragged from running along beside me for so long. The look it gave me was pure vile. It was a mix of hatred and hunger, like it hated my existence. Its fur was darkish yellow, maybe light brown. It looked like how dead grass looks, all withered and dying. I got home in about two minutes after that. I was cutting cars off and running lights on my bike. I never biked by there at night again. I'm too scared. I now know what is out there. I live in the prairie and it camouflaged itself perfectly in the tall prairie grass. I never told anybody this. I'm mostly afraid because no one would believe me. But I think it was a dogman or maybe the Rougarou that my friends told me about. But after researching that, I found out that people's pets were disappearing from the area at the same time that I saw what I think was this dogman. My fiance and I postponed our wedding in 1990. We were getting stressed and needed a vacation. We lived on the big island in Hawaii. So naturally, we went to the mainland. We did not have much money, so we rented a car, bought a tent, and decided to try to visit and camp in as many state and national parks in the western US as we could. 
We were driving in the middle of nowhere on our way to Yellowstone. It was a desert-like area we were driving through, and it was the end of September and very hot. We saw an old building from far away on the road and decided to take a break to explore it. As we approached the building, we could hear flies and something smelling really bad. We opened the door and it was like a big open farm building. The walls and metal roof were splattered in blood. Everywhere we looked, there were bodies, parts of elks. I am from the islands, but my fiance was from Northern California and familiar with wildlife. He said they were elk bodies. They must have been there for at least a while, and there was like 50 or more of them in there. It was so strange. They looked like they were torn apart. Pieces of meat were flung and hung all over inside the building. I freaked out and started to cry. The smell and sights were overwhelming. My fiance said he couldn't understand it because it was not like they were being processed for collecting meat or horns or anything. All the parts were still there and he said it looked like they were torn apart, not cut with a knife. I had to go. I felt like I was in shock. My fiance refused to let me call the police. He said he did not want to get involved. He said it must be the work of crazy poachers. A few miles later, we entered Yellowstone National Park, where as usual, we chose an out-of-the-way campsite. We were on high alert, so, as we had been listening to news stories on the radio about a female hiker camping in a remote part of the park alone, apparently she was torn apart by a grizzly bear. There were few details about the attack, and I'm still unable to find any written reports on the event anywhere online, which is weird because we heard the news report over the radio for several days before getting to the park. We had a campsite with a bathroom nearby and a barbecue. There were very few people in the park and no one camping near us. There were signs everywhere warning people to be careful with food stores because of the bears. We had a couple of beers and went to sleep in the tent. I often got hungry after dinner and decided to take a bag of pears into the tent, thinking that if I put it under my pillow that no animals would smell it there. Remember, I'm from Hawaii, and we do not have wild animals there. There are no bears, skunks, possums, squirrels, chipmunks, armadillos, wolverines, elks, lions, or snakes. We do have deer and boar in the mountains introduced by European hunters like a hundred years ago, though. I fell asleep, pears snugly under my pillow. I was awakened by an immense weight on my upper right side of my chest and my entire right arm and right side of my torso, down to my hip. My first thought was, bear, there's a bear on top of me wanting my pears. But as the second developed into minutes, and the minutes turned into hours, this immense weight not once ever moved, nor did it shift, or twitch, or even make a single sound. In the first second, I decided not to move or make any noise, and definitely not awaken my boyfriend, who was soundly sleeping to my left. I felt myself beginning to panic thinking that it had to be a bear attracted by the smell of my pears. But as time dragged by, I realized that if this were a wild animal, and it was literally on top of me inches away from the fruit that it would have pawed outside the tent to get to, or at least shifted, moved, or snorted. But, to me, I felt like the car was parked on the upper right half of my body. It was just being so still. It was so heavy and unmoving. What was the weirdest aspect besides it being a massive unmoving totally science something is that it was warm. This flurry of thoughts and confusions literally dragged on for hours. I became so terrified and overwhelmed I knew whatever was sitting standing or laying or parked or whatever next to me would not have been of this world. Once after all of those hours of trying not to breathe heavily, panicking or even twitch a muscle, I passed out cold from sheer terror, and my mind and body just shut down. I totally understand now how or why when people see a cryptid or monster they faint and or lose bowel control. The big difference with me is that I could not see it, I could only feel it. And thinking it was a grizzly bear that could use its razor-like teeth and claws to easily get into that tent, it made it so much more confusing. When I awoke the next day, my fiance was already up. I told him what had happened, and I was completely freaked out. I checked the tent for any marks or signs of something on the fabric, but there was nothing. 
There were also no suspicious paw prints or footprints around the tent or campsite. Instead of listening to my story, my fiancé stopped me and he started uh, getting on my case and scolding me for those pairs. I was totally still freaked out and wanted to leave. My right arm and right side of my body were aching. That was not a dream, nor was it sleep paralysis. I have never been that terrified all my life. Never before or since that happened. I told the story to an experienced Sasquatch researcher. He said these types of tent antics are pretty common with juvenile Sasquatch. He said many researchers and witnesses believe that Sasquatch can actually see through the tent fabric somehow and enjoy harassing campers. So, my story isn't a typical story, and I'm not sure how to categorize it other than folklore or maybe cryptid. So, a few years ago, me and my boyfriend broke up, and he started dating a girl that, in our small town, was a self-proclaimed witch or lacuza. In Hispanic folklore, it's some sort of shapeshifter. She would hold parties that involved certain rituals and sacrifices. She had many cats that would die mysteriously. And if you know anything about cats, it's that they don't die easily. She had about five cats die within a year, just randomly with no real explanation. Anyway, I often have vivid dreams when I was younger. This time, I fell asleep on the couch and had a very vivid dream about this same girl. She had this evil expression on her face, and she had spoken to me. It felt like she was delivering a direct message. So when I woke up, I told my mom that I needed to talk to her, but I didn't want to speak about it in front of my dad or boyfriend, since they would disregard the supernatural. We drove to a gas station a few miles down the road from our subdivision, and I explained the dream. We spoke about it for maybe 20 minutes before returning to our house. On the way back, on the street before mine, I saw a dark figure on the side of the road. I leaned in, focusing on it since it caught my attention. Now, most times I disregard it as just a person walking, but this time, it was different. It was like something was forcing me to notice. It was maybe two feet tall, and suddenly turned to face me. When it did, I realized it was an owl. But it was too large to be an owl, and the face was more like a woman's. It had pale skin, its eyes were human-like, but there were no color or white to them. It had a hooked beak like a bird. This thing's eyes were pitch black and it pierced right through me. It freaked me the fuck out. I was instantly filled with dread and overwhelming fear. I began panicking and asking if my mom had seen it too. She said no. She stopped the car and reversed. I looked back in the meantime, but I didn't see it anymore. My heart dropped in my stomach when I didn't see it. I would have felt better knowing where it had gone. It all happened in slow motion for me, but in reality it took all of 10 seconds to pass by. We sat there for a few minutes as I explained what I saw, but my mom said she never saw it. She explained to me what it was exactly and how her dad, my grandpa, had showed her one and her siblings when they were kids. They fly around and whistle like a human would, and if you whistle back, you're answering it and it'll come after you. I wish I could say that's all that happened, but it wasn't. Later that night at around 11 or so, me and my boyfriend were watching a movie when we heard a loud thud on the roof. We looked at each other like, what the fuck? He muted the TV and we listened for a few seconds and we could hear something moving around. It sounded like scratching noises or scraping against the roof. I began crying and telling him what happened earlier. I hadn't told him because I thought he'd think I was imagining things. Him being a skeptic of the supernatural, he got up because our room was at the front of the house. He exited our room and walked past our foyer and out the front door. He backed into the driveway and looked up on the roof, but said whatever it was was gone by now. We never figured it out. It was very strange and a creepy occurrence. It still haunts me to this very day. I don't tell this very often, as it makes me look like a nutcase. Well, my name is Ross and I'm from the UK. Years ago, I used to work in a blockbuster video store, so that gives you an approximate date as they don't exist anymore. 
Well, it was a Wednesday morning. I know that because deliveries were always on Wednesdays, and there had been a massive delivery. The store wasn't large, so the whole place looked like a child's giant box fort. There was only me and another girl in the store. Let's call her Claire, as I don't think she'd like me using her real name. She went out back to pack some of the delivery. I was behind the counter unpacking games and getting them processed for rentals. I had been kneeling down for about a half hour sorting disc when I looked up to see something on the counter. There was what I could only describe as a goblet. It was about three feet high and hard to see or explain. What I mean is, you know when you are laying on the grass on a sunny day and someone comes and stands with the sun behind you to talk to you and they are in darkness fringed by light? Well, it was like that. From what I could see, it was long, thin, and red, with small wings and tiny pinched nose glasses. It was writing in a little book while it's looking at me. It looked like one of the goblins from Labyrinth crossed with one of the devils from Jim Henson's The Storyteller. My heart jumped into my throat. I nearly threw up and felt like passing out. My pulse was so high, my head was about to explode. It calmly put his pencil down, and the side of its notebook looked over its glasses at me winked and disappeared. Seconds later, Claire came out of the back office. She looked at me and said, Do you feel alright? You look pale and like you've seen a ghost. I muttered I was fine and made some excuse to go into the back office. There I sat drinking coffee for about an hour till my hands stopped shaking. No one has ever believed me about this. They just look at me like I'm insane and move on. One thing that's always bothered me though, what was it writing in that book? I live in the suburbs of Budapest, Hungary, in a small town about 15 minutes from the city. They call it a town, but really it's just an overgrown village. It has the feeling to it and all. Lighting at night is scarce, but, and this might be a source of my luck here, our street is pretty well lit. Why I think it's lucky? A few days ago, I had to move out of my room to take refuge in a guest bedroom so my room can get repainted. The guest bedroom is small, almost claustrophobic, and it has one large window, through which I can see most of the neighbor's houses on the other side of the street. Our flat is on the first floor of the building, a nice two-flat house with a big garden, though it's mostly empty. My room's windows look directly into the garden, but the guest bedroom faces the street, which enabled my experience. One night, I was trying to sleep despite my insomnia. I started hearing strange pulsing sounds, like someone turned on loud music at one of our neighbors. But this sound was weird. It followed no particular pattern or beat, and yet, it felt strangely familiar. It wasn't until I realized that it was getting louder and moving closer that it was the noise of something big walking down the street on two legs. Out of curiosity, I was already at my window bathing in the lamplight coming from outside when I spotted it. The creature was vaguely humanoid with smooth, gray skin, a head devoid of any facial features or any hair, and four arms, the second pair sprouting from the sides of its ribcage. It didn't look emaciated, but I could still see its bones beneath the skin. In fact, it looked oddly muscular, as if posing while strolling down the street. I forgot to tell this most important bit. This thing was huge. We live on the first floor, and I was looking upwards from my bed through my window, but I still had to go closer to the window to look at its head. This thing was at least 20 feet tall, possibly bigger, and there it was walking down our street in the middle of the night, calmly looking around with an eyeless face, stopping occasionally to take a peek inside of a house, then continuing its stroll. I wasn't scared at first, my reaction was closer to, what the actual fuck? But that quickly turned into fear as it turned my way, its featureless face staring in my general direction. Realizing I was still in the lamplight, I quickly retreated and watched from the shadows. The giant walked to our house and took a good look. It stood there for at least a few minutes, seemingly scanning the house for something. 
I dared not move, lest it notice me, and God knows what it would have done to me. So I just stared, terrified at this monstrosity, its four arms dangling idly beside it as it looked at me with this featureless face. Sorry for repeating it so much, but I stared at it for so long the picture is burned into my retinas, and when I closed my eyes I could still see that face staring into my soul. Since I was young, I've seen these weird humanoid figures. They're black silhouettes, pitch black, looking and ranging from various tall sizes. Sometimes I can see them, but I can sense their location, and I get a fuzzy visual in my mind of how they look. For some reason, I've had one follow me for most of my life, but this particular one doesn't seem to like showing itself physically to me. I only get the sensation it's around or get small glimpses of it out of the corner of my eyes. I'm not sure why it's following me, but all these weird things started happening when I moved to the Bakersfield for a couple of years when I was a child. At first, I thought the places I lived were haunted. I don't think every house I've ever moved could be haunted though, so I concluded that maybe I'm being haunted. It doesn't matter where I move, this thing follows me. I can be in the middle of a conversation and I'll get that feeling that it's behind me watching me. I can sense this tall figure looming behind me when I walk from my home to school or go to the mall with friends. Sometimes it'll leave for long periods of time, but eventually it returns. I don't feel threatened by it, but I don't feel comfortable around it either. I get the feeling it's waiting for something and that makes me uncomfortable. I also don't get the feeling that it's human, or maybe it never was human. I've told my family about it and they don't really believe me. The only one that does is my cousin, who came to stay with me at my house for a little while. Really weird stuff happened when they came and it continued to intensify until she left. I asked her about it and she told me she had noticed too and it was weird because nothing like that had happened before at her place. Now I rarely see the silhouette creatures but I still sometimes feel them around. I hope they've gone away forever, but I'm still scared that they'll come back. Does anyone have anything similar happen? Could this be some sort of haunting, or is it some sort of cryptic creature? I, I, I'm not sure why this is happening, but any advice would be very appreciated. I suppose I should start off with some background. All this may or may not be relevant. I'm still just trying to figure this out by giving out as much information as I can. So here it is. My friend Julia was found dead two years ago in a Walgreens parking lot. She was slumped over in her car with no visible injuries, and the case was ruled as a suicide by drug overdose. I never believed this. She was the kind of person that you see and you just cannot help from smiling. She was a joy to be around. She would never have done drugs, and she definitely would not do them to the point of an OD. I always thought the police were trying to cover up something. I just never knew what. I was never shown any evidence of medication in her car, and when I arrived at the scene at her death, the officers never let me close enough to see anything. I never thought I would see her again, because typically dead people are supposed to, you know, stay dead. I used to think that every day. I was taking a walk through a wooded area near my property earlier this morning. I would say it was about 8am and everything was normal until the birds stopped chirping. Squirrels stopped jumping from tree to tree. The wind itself seemed to stop blowing. I was in awe. I had never experienced this kind of silence. The only sound was my breathing. I looked around. When I turned back, I was face to face at the path in the front of me. I saw a fox in the trail. It looked at me and tilted its head. I blinked and the fox was gone or it transformed or something. Julia was standing about 15 meters down the, the trail from me now. And I, I was just mind blown. She was staring at me and smiled. She was in the same clothes as she was when I last saw her alive. A white blouse and blue jeans. This could not have been anyone else but her. 
the brunette hair, the facial features, it was her. I yelled out her name in disbelief and she waved. I ran towards her but she ran through the bush and out of sight. I went through the bush and it felt like miles after I was following her through thorns still calling for her. I nearly fell when I reached a steep cliff that was about 30 meters into the small valley. I saw nothing but the sounds of the forest and they came back to life. I just stood there on the edge of the cliff, trying not to fall off. I still have no idea what happened. Is Julia trying to tell me something? D does she need help? Was Julia the fox? I, I do live near some Navajo reservations. And some people have suggested that it might be a skinwalker trying to lure me to coming off that cliff. Please, if anyone has any answers to this, I, I would love to know if you think this is a skinwalker or some ghost or spirit. This is Central Wisconsin, when my dad was around, not even a teenager yet. Wisconsin was even more rural back then, and the area has since become more city. Anyway, my dad and his friend grew up in the country, and always walked the woods, trails, and swamping land. Not much else to do, but my dad said that him and his friend were walking on a path in one of these spots one day, and this black cat kept following them. Anytime they stopped to look at the cat, the stop would look at them. He said they would try using stones and etc, but the cat just wouldn't get scared. And after a few minutes, they started walking faster and the cat kept following at a good pace. Apparently, they both got a very bad feeling and said they didn't want to look back anymore. Once they said that and started walking again, they heard this dark evil laughter and turned around to see a man in a super old school, all black attire, walking away laughing into the bush. So they freaked out obviously and ran away. So, this part was something my dad told me last year and I did not know until recently. My grandpa was friends with this older guy who lived around the area, and I guess my dad knew him and would stop by. After this cat thing, my dad came by one time and started telling the story. Apparently, it freaked the guy out real bad. He said he had been outside doing whatever and all of a sudden, this pure black dog comes by and starts staring him down. Then growling and the guy had a super uneasy feeling and started backing up to his door. Apparently, the moment he turned his back and rushed in and slammed the door, the dog had changed and lunged towards the door barking and crazy for a second before it went away. The guy said that he heard this evil laughter and looked out the window to see the same guy my dad saw, all black old school clothes from the 1800s walking away laughing and disappeared. My dad swears to this day he didn't make it up and does not tell anyone. He hates me ever sharing it because this shit is so unbelievable that it makes people think that he is dishonest and crazy. I have no idea what it really was, but I can definitely say that it was some creepy shit. In July of last year, I went up to southern Norway, where I have a little holiday cabin. The cabin is situated out and above the little town of Eve, approximately 65 kilometers from the port of Christiansand, to the north. To get to the cabin, you have to drive up from Eve, on a paved road, which takes you up into the hills. You pass lakes on the way and a handful of houses, and lots of forest and water runs. My cabin is on the very end of that area, 16 kilometers into the wild. Besides one other cabin, that is situated 500 meters away and only occupied from time to time, I am all by myself out there. My cabin is above a small lake resting on a slope. On the third day of my arrival, I went outside into the cabin's deck to have a cigarette. It was about 10 p.m. and I'm still very light outside because it is summer months and the sun never really goes down here. I heard noises, water splashing and grunts coming from the lake below. The shore is about 30 meters from the deck of my cabin. I walked up to the edge of the deck to see what it was because it really freaked me out. When I looked down to the shore, I saw a hunched over, hairy creature trying to pull a dead moose onto the shore by the neck. The thing turned around and has apparently noticed me, standing there looking at it. It has swung its head around violently, giving me a grim kind of look. It turned its back to me and it casually ran into the bushes. The creature was about man's size, 
180 centimeters or so. The weight I could guess was probably no more than 250 pounds. It had a protruding snout like a wolf's, upright ears, not too big, and was covered in taft-like brown and black hair. Its arms and legs were normal size. The legs were straight and the overall appearance was pretty slim bodied. I went back inside the cabin, panicked and locked the barricaded door and blocked the windows. I went out for an ax and I kept it in the utility room by the front door usually. I sat in a chair by the back door, lights off, only the oven and fireplace was lit. I could not believe and make out what it was and I was freaking out even more at this point, realizing that far down south in Norway, there are basically no wolves or bears. Ten minutes in, I heard the most radical howls that I have ever come by. They, they sounded mad, crazed in a way, and did not even try to get to the car, which was right out front close to the main entrance. I was petrified and could not shut one eye the whole night. The howls of commotion outside in the bushes went on pretty much all night as well. The next day, I carefully left the cabin and went for my car to head into town. The problem is, I have no internet or any connection out there. I went straight to the police station to file a report of what I saw. The officials told me it must have been a big dog trying to put me off. They did not laugh as I expected. They did not look me in the eyes and started talking about each other in Norwegian. They looked at each other in the eyes, however seeming a bit nervous. I was complimented outside because I was getting pissed about being put off like that. I received no copy of the report or anything like that. The last few days of my stay, nothing else happened except that carcass of the moose was picked up by someone. Nothing left at the scene. I checked with the local and asked him if there were any bears or wolves that far south, just to confirm that I, what I already knew. He replied no. Besides all that, I forgot to mention that the creature casually went off running on two legs. To this day, even though it has gotten better, I feel paranoid, even around familiar places like my house, yard, and whatnot. My name is Clara. I live in the upper state of Michigan, and I love to hike and camp along with some hunting. I went out one day with my stepdad to go hunting so we could catch some deer and whatnot. Once we got to the location where we were going to hunt, we packed up our gear that we had brought from our house. I smelled something foul like a pile of garbage of rotting fish mixed with some really bad body odor. We ignored it and thought something was dead laying around nearby. We made our way through the woods onto a beaten down path that we had found close by. Once we got quite a ways out there, we stopped and took a couple of minutes of silence to hear what was going around around us. We heard a huge crack in the background behind some large bushes. My stepdad instinctively grabbed his sidearm from his holster, and that is whatever whatever it was growled at us and sped off. Whatever it was sounded huge and very fast. We of course ignored it, but hiked even faster to where we need to get to. Once we got there, we set up camp and started to make lunch. We had a hot dog and a side of salad as we ate. I started to smell that putrid smell again which almost made me vomit my food back out. I had to pee so I went off to the nearest bush I could find and grabbed a flashlight and a hunting knife because it was getting near dusk. I squatted down as I was about to take a pee until I seen something move in the distance. I shined my flashlight at whatever was moving. I could see orange and red glowing eyes shining as I started to become frightened. I pulled my pants back up and ran back to the camp. I told my stepdad about what happened and he went to check it out. After a couple of minutes, I heard a loud scream in the direction my dad was walking off to. He ran back panicking, real bad with blood oozing down his knee. I asked what happened, but he stayed on silent mode. He packed up our stuff as fast as he could and we walked as fast as we could to the truck. Once we got halfway there, we heard a loud call from something I I've never heard before. A at that moment, we started running as fast as we could, nearly about tripping over roots until, after a couple of minutes or so, we finally made it back to the truck, packed everything in the back, and sped off. We came home and went straight to sleep, but before I saw his knee, which looked like it was hit by a big rock or so, I'm not sure what we encountered that night, but I'm positive it was nothing of this world that we know of.
I think it might have been a Bigfoot, but I can only speculate. I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. My mom would often take us camping in the summers. This particular camping trip was somewhere in the vicinity of Shiprock, New Mexico. My mother took my older brother Chris, who was 10, and myself, who was 8, camping often in those days, and preferred dispersed camping on BLM and MPS land to campgrounds managed by, you know, just companies. So, she'd usually find us a spot and make herself busy by setting up the tents and pit while Chris and I would scamper around and explore the area, and be generally unhelpful little shits. On this particular trip, we arrived in the middle of the day, and as mom started setting up camp, Chris and I started to explore the area around our campsite. We wandered off into the woods around our campsite. Being in the desert, it was really just stunted trees and sagebrush so I hesitated to describe it as a forest. But the trees are bush and they're taller than me and provided a decent screen. I wandered down into a gully and came face to face what I can only describe to my mother later as a wolf kangaroo. It was crouched low, with long slender arms reaching down to the ground, and large, pointed ears like a deer. The fur covering its body was sandy brown and patchy as if it had mange. It had large orange gold eyes and a snout like a wolf or a coyote. It bared its teeth at me and stood up. Its full height was probably easily the biggest animal I had ever seen, towering over us and the sagebrush. I had never been, and probably still have never been, as frightened as I was then. Chris and I started to scream for mom to come to our rescue. Chris regained his senses before me, taking off running back up the embankment to the campsite. The wolf kangaroo thing turned and sort of, I don't know, speed skated away from us through the bush and screamed. Its legs were backwards like a dog's, and its strides took it far away and fast, and definitely faster than any deer antelope I'd ever seen. After a split second of staring in horror, I followed up my brother up the embankment, screaming bloody murder for my mom. We were so frightened that my mom packed us up into the car and moved camps, conceding for once to stay in a managed campground. Chris and I were too scared to sleep in our own tent that night and clung to our mom at the smallest twig snapping in the brush. So that's my story. I hope you guys enjoy it. It is kind of bored compared to most other cryptid kind of stories, but it is 100% true. Me and my brother Chris have never been able to find an explanation for what we saw that day in the bush. I used to work at a local coal mining company on the Navajo Reservation as an operator for a coal haulage crew. I drove haulage equipment and it was one of those Crest 240 ton coal haul belly dump trucks. If you've seen those trucks, they're pretty huge. They're about two to three stories high and about one third length of a football field. They're massive. I remember that I was working the night shift, which started at around 11 p.m. Before we started the shift, we were required to do a pre-start inspection on our equipment. I walked around my truck and I went to the rear of the truck, lowered the stairs that gave me access to the engine bay. I walked up the stairs and started my inspection. I found a pretty bad coolant leak on the truck. I climbed back down and went into the cab and called my haulage supervisor. He answered me and I asked if I can drive the truck back to the main shop for repairs. So I left the ready line and drove the 6 to 8 miles back to the shop and I called the shop maintenance supervisor and he instructed me to drive around the back side of the shop and park the truck there. I drove around the shop, parked the truck, and I wanted to see how much coolant I had left. I climbed back down from the cab, walked over to the back side of the truck, and lowered the stairs. I checked the coolant level, and I had significant loss of coolant. I called my supervisor over to the radio and asked him to pick me up. As I started to walk away from the truck and towards the shop I had seen it, it was black, like a bull mastiff. It walked weird, and had patches of tan fur missing, blotches of black skin, and its head was massive. The head was as large as a pumpkin, and it bobbled like it was unbalanced. It had unnatural look, like nothing I had ever seen. 
This thing walked on all fours and was about four to five feet tall. It was about a hundred feet away and it was walking toward me. My first instinct that it was a sick dog, mange infested and malnourished. It continued to walk towards me and I thought this sucker might be sick and have rabies. I took out my flashlight and signed it right at it, yelling at it to stay away. It continued to walk towards me. It was then that I noticed that it wasn't alive. Its eyes did not have a reflection. Its eyes were black and solid. It was... it wasn't natural. I reached for my pocket knife and yelled at it to stop and I drew out my knife. It stopped. By then it was about 20 feet away. I was still walking towards the shop in a parallel. I never looked away. I thought it could attack me. By the time I got to the shop door entrance, it started to walk towards the east. I went inside and got to the shop supervisor and we both came out. It wasn't about a minute later, but it was gone. We walked to the east and my supervisor just drove up. Now, there is only one way into the back side of the shop and my supervisor should have seen it, but he didn't. I explained to him what I seen and he said that he didn't know what it could be. My supervisor said that it could be a skimwalker and that it usually was seen around the shop. The rest of the shift I stay with my supervisor. I think he was scared too. I wasn't scared, nor did I go into shock like some people describe. But it was an experience that I will never forget. When I was about 11 or 12, we lived in a small house made of mud and stone. A lot like our house now. It was two of my brothers and I in the house. Everyone else had gone to James' feast and left us to tend to the sheep. We were getting ready for bed when we heard the dogs going crazy outside. Thinking it was nothing more than coyotes howling in the distance, we told them to be quiet. We began to drift off into sleep, and the dogs would not shut up. Somehow, I was able to fall asleep for a few hours. Then I woke up very late in the night. It was very quiet and still in the house, save for my brother snoring and breathing. I realized I need to use the outhouse to wake up my brother to take me there. He teased me about being scared, which I certainly was. We went out with our flashlight to the outhouse. The dogs began with their crazed barking out in the sagebrush, going from one place to the next. My brother went first and I waited for him outside. While waiting, I tried to follow the dogs with my flashlight. Suddenly, there was a very loud whine from one of the dogs. Then everything went quiet again. It was really too quiet for that time of year. Not even the sheep were making noise. Suddenly, I heard a few of the dogs going completely mad by the truck. When I looked over, there was this man. He was unbelievably tall, leaning one arm on the cab of the roof truck. He was looking at the dogs for a little, and then suddenly kicking one of them. They all scattered in different directions. The thing looked up at me, and I saw its face. It had a pure white face like a full moon, two burning red eyes, and a slight smile that was pure black. I could not move or make a sound. It began to walk toward me with long strides, until it finally towered over me. All I began to see was a dark red, like a color of blood when you cut the throat of a sheep. I kept getting deeper and deeper into his eyes. I can faintly hear my brother coming out of the outhouse. With this, the thing looked up at him. Reality came rushing back to me. I noticed that my brother was too distracted with his buckle to realize what was going on. I also noticed this thing's long hands hovering just inches from my head. Its skin was black ash and he smelled like a bloated dead animal in the summer. I was still unable to move or speak. The thing moved and went towards my brother. Finally noticing this figure, my brother became paralyzed as I was. Closer and closer it drew, reaching an arm out towards my brother's head. Something finally snapped in me and I, I became unbearably angry. I broke from the trance and lunged at it raising my arms like a wild animal and baring my teeth at it. A growl came out that I never knew I could make. I became more and more angrier at the thing that it was trying to hurt us. It kept that smile at first, but the angrier I got the more the smile faded. Finally, with everything I had I began to make a primal roar at it. It fell backwards and ran away into the night. Looking back at me, its eyes were dim and dull. Its smile was gone now. The next morning my family returned to the feast. After relaying my story to my parents, they quickly went and hired a medicine man.
So, first some background is required. I live in a small forest town, technically a village, in Massachusetts, just north of Boston. The elementary school had this event every fall called the Fall Fun Down. There's always food and stuff there for kids to run around outside. It used to be a super good time. Anyways, my friend who's a couple years older than me told me how five years ago this girl wandered off into the woods by the baseball field behind the school. Those woods are huge as shit and she was in there for like hours. Nobody knew where she went and there was a mini panic. When she finally came out, she was crying and couldn't talk about what happened. She literally hasn't been the same since. Not even now in high school. She changed in a huge way. So here's the other part. There have now been two sightings of a strange creature scampering up the tree and disappearing. One by the same friend on his own a couple years ago in this woods the girl got lost in. He described a dog looking creature with primate arms. It climbed up a tree super quick and he couldn't find it again. A couple months ago, I was walking in some nearby woods with my friends, and we saw this massive, whitish gray blur run up a tree and disappear. It was way bigger than any squirrel or something we could have mistaken it as, and we thought it looked doggish. That was before I heard the stories from my other friend. We always hear howling in both woods areas as well, which was probably coyotes, but it kinda makes you wonder, you know? I'm very, very sure there's something out there, but I have no idea what it could possibly be. Definitely not someone's pet or lone coyote. I have one more story if you're interested. I'm just less sure on that one because we we saw two shining eyes watching us in the woods at night. If you guys have any ideas, please share them. I'd love to tell you about an unsettling experience I had about four years ago in the fall. I was born in and still live in Lewisbury, Pennsylvania. My younger years were spent back near the old observatory, around Moore's Mountain Road and Observatory Drive. Even then, I could sense that the area was a little off. The woods were just not quite right. Open fields seemed eerie and the roads never seemed to go to the exact places you thought they did. Moore's Mountain Church boasted Spook Hollow, which was a logging road that just kind of petered out and reeked of being creepy. But let's get to the present. Most nights than not, I will drive down to New Cumberland for a cold beer and some darts and one night in October 2012 was no different. On the return trip, not long after midnight, I was on Route 382 headed east towards Lewisbury. As I was approaching John Brenneman's place up on the right, just before Brenneman Drive, I saw someone walking towards me along the side of the road. True, it was late, but it was rather mild for October, so it wasn't out of question for someone walking on the side of the road. What was odd is that he was quite tall, 6'6 or taller, and really, really thin. In the few seconds that I was looking at him or it, I noticed that he or it was either limping or having trouble walking. It seemed to be dressed all in black with black pants and a tight black trench coat, very very dark skin and short dark hair. As I debated slowing down, maybe someone had an accident, he dropped down to all fours and quickly scampered across the road in front of me. It has this face that was, as I said, coal black with a cross between human and canine, and then it was gone. When I got home, I hadn't really thought about it much until the next day or two. It really started to give me some creeps. I didn't say anything to anyone for a few days and then told a few close friends. Being self-employed and fearing decision that I was going to get some kind of bad reputation, I was reluctant to talk about it. Although I had always been an enthusiast of the paranormal, cryptozoology, ghosts, and the like, I have always been such a die-hard skeptic. I can't explain what I saw or begin to postulate what it was. I only know that I saw something, and it creeps me out to this day. I did some research and the closest thing I came to was like the Texas Stiltwalker. So, I am from Southern Illinois. 
I'm about 28 now, but this story happened when I was 12. Let me start off by saying that I've always been interested in the paranormal and cryptids, but I'm not someone who imagines things. I live in a very small town. It doesn't even show up on the map. Anyways, I was across the street from my house, at a friend's house. He was a year older than me. I planned to stay the night over there and play PlayStation all night and make fun of Max after dark as we always did. Yes people, I am practically an old man now. Anyways, he had a huge backyard that sloped down quite steeply, but at a slow incline. So it didn't look so much like a big hill unless you were on top of it. His deck was looking down or at the very edge of his backyard looking up. This matters later. Anyway, he had a neighbor spread far out on both sides with huge yards. Beyond this backyard was a small valley with a house at the top of each side. To the left side of this valley was a small field with prairie grass about an acre in size. The right side was a small wood also about an acre in size with meandering creeks running through both parts separating Aaron's property from Ryan and his brothers. We used to ride our bikes through it, play manhunt, and search for crawdads. This summer night we were hanging out in the clubhouse, where the kids would hang out on the top of the hill to the right of this valley. They actually owned the woods as well. The clubhouse was a small cabin with a loft. It was about 10 feet by 10 feet with a window on each side and the entrance of the front facing their house. So we are just chilling there when we hear this loud rustling off in the bush. It is dark outside but we are all junior high kids so we thought we were tough guys. We looked outside the window and you could see something moving in the brush close to where the woods and the field begins. Now I was not one to get creeped out for easy reasons. But this time, I kinda was. We were no stranger to opossums, raccoons, coyotes, stray dogs, and all the creatures that were out there. No big deal. Once we were outside of the clubhouse and moved closer to the house again, I would say about a hundred feet to the edge of the woods, trying to see in the twilight and creep up on whatever it was, we heard a growl and a violent movement of the brush. We noped the fuck out of there and retreating back to the deck of Ryan's house. His younger brother got their stepdad and we told him that there was something or someone out in the woods. He had a searchlight for boating. He plugged it in and scanned the woods and there was nothing. He told us to come the hell down and stop being pussies and we went back inside. Ryan and his brother decided to call it a night. It was beyond dark at this time. So Aaron and I hurried to our bikes and made the jump on the ramp we all built across the creek. We parked our bikes and went inside his house. We quickly forgot about the incident while playing our PlayStation and chugging Mountain Dew. Now his house was your standard mid-century ranch house. They used the connecting room between the garage and kitchen as a little TV room for him to play video games. And this room was a set of French doors that led outside to their deck, which is about 10 feet off the ground. Around 2, we stopped playing video games and started talking about school, girls, and whatnot. Then. We started talking about what it might have been out in those woods. At some point, during our conversation, we heard a thump outside. It sounded like it came back and it was low to the ground. It was enough to make us stop and listen. Then we heard it again. The room was dark except for the glow of the TV and the volume was so loud that it was almost inaudible. Aaron got up from the couch and went to the doors which had those 1990s long vertical blinds covering them. He peeked out one side and I peeked out the other. From there, we saw a slumped over dark figure by the bottom of the stairs leading down from the deck. At first, we thought it might be a person trying to break in. Aaron's stepdad was gone working the midnight shift and his mom was one of those sensitive must be protected types, so we decided not to tell her as she would probably be hysterical. We chose to keep an eye on things to see what happened. We left the front doors and went into the kitchen to get a better look from the kitchen windows. Whatever it was, was a bigger than a man, by far, but it was hard to make out any details from it being so dark, and us being about 15 feet above it. We could tell it was on all fours, and facing the steps up to the deck. It began coming up the steps, but it paused. Aaron's dog, Damien, a medium-sized mutt that looked like a black version of Lassie with slightly shorter hair and a white spot in his chest, began growling at the doors after the deck. Aaron's mom took sleeping pills and a couple glasses of wine so she would be out like a fat girl playing dodgeball. Plus, she hated to be bothered, so we still figured we wouldn't get her. 
You could tell Damien was angry, but unlike how he would usually go after something, he was kind of scared but being protective. We got some courage and flipped the back deck lights on, and whatever it was took off like a bat out of hell. Then, we crept outside onto the deck with a flashlight and scanned the yard. We didn't see anything, but we yelled out to whatever it was to not come back. We had guns, a dog, and we would fuck it up. Dumb kids, right? So, we go inside and it was hard to get to sleep, but Aaron finally did. I still laid awake on the floor petting the dog. All of a sudden I got a weird feeling, like being watched I guess. The hair on my arm stood up and even though I didn't know what I might see, I went to the French doors and peeked out. There was this dark animal on all fours by a tree, at the left of the property on the hill. I could see it because there was nothing but a stump in the small hill. I was taken aback. I quickly got Aaron and he came to see. This took a maybe minute toss, but by the time we looked out there, the figure was of a man now and not an animal anymore. It was about 4 a.m. and it was morning twilight so we could easily tell it was a man. We couldn't believe it. We turned to each other and were like, what the hell is going on? We looked back out and he was walking into the field and disappeared into the woods. We talked about it for an hour, and then we went back to bed. To this day, I haven't had an experience like that ever again. I don't know what it was. I thought that maybe that this time it was a werewolf or maybe some shapeshifter. But nowadays, I just wonder if it wasn't some creepy guy being very creepy. But why would it be on all fours, and how would he have some sort of fur? But then again, why would he look so large, and why would the figure be on the hill on all fours look so large, and why would he be on all fours and all? I still can't decide. What do you guys think? Skimwalker, werewolf, or just some creepy guy? This happened about two years ago. This may or not have been a Bigfoot type thing, and I personally feel like it was. Some quick background first. There have been Bigfoot sightings in my part of Alabama, one only two hours away a few years ago. My mother, who does not believe in the paranormal at all, once told me that she heard some strange noises in the wood behind her house. It was early morning and she was outside with the dog when she heard what sounded like a news coming out of the woods. What she told me that she heard like a monkey, but deeper very deep hooting sounds rising and falling. So with this in mind, here's my story. It was about 10 at night and I was walking down our fairly long driveway to get the mail. Our house is surrounded on both sides by fairly thick woods. Suddenly, I heard a deep hooting sound coming from the woods down the road. It sounded like what I've heard a howler monkey try to sound like. This creeped me out a bit and I immediately thought of what my mom heard, so I walked quickly back up the driveway. I stopped right there before getting into the garage and walked towards the woods. I wanted to know if I could hear it again. Suddenly, the hooting sound happened again, this time only a few feet into the woods in front of me. It was very dark at night, and I had no flashlight. I stood there for a few minutes listening to these deep ape-like hooting sounds. Suddenly I heard a second one answer with the same sounds on the other side of the woods behind the house. The trees in that area also began to shake violently. I'm in just disbelief at this point of what I'm hearing. Not just that, but when I realized that the first one I heard must have moved parallel to me through the woods to be close in front of me, a shiver went up my spine. Had it been watching me? I ran inside to get my brother. He's more level-headed than I am and I felt that stepping outside and hearing these two creatures hooting and shouting into the woods, he would completely have an answer. But instead, after hearing these sounds, he went silent. We stood there quietly for several minutes listening, before he finally whispered, What the fuck is that? I just answered, I have no idea. I haven't heard it since that, and it still bothers me. It bothers me even more knowing that it, it's, it's gone. There are no more sounds and we haven't heard it since. I have kicked myself since for not having my phone so I could record it. It was a long time before I felt comfortable going outside at night again. Again, I've had people try to tell me that I heard owls or monkeys or something, but I can't explain you the size of what was making those sounds. 
especially the second one. It just sounded so huge, and it was at least large enough to shake the trees. I don't go for night or early morning jogs anymore either, which is something I used to really enjoy. So this happened in Melbourne, Florida, a while back. School had just ended, and I missed my bus to get home. I called my dad and asked him to pick me up, because I didn't have a car at the time. And he said he would, but since he was at work, it might take a few hours. I was upset, but took this as an opportunity to get homework done, and sat down at a bench, facing the fence of the school. Across the street there was some sort of clinic, and in front of it, there was a pale four-legged thing sprinting full speed like a dog except bigger. I remember that it had really big hind legs. This part sounds really weird, but I swear to God, a car of some sort went by and as it passed the front, the creature just vanished. I think most likely, it went and hid somewhere or maybe even latched onto the car. The people who I had told this to said it was probably just disappeared or teleported or something, but honestly, I don't believe that. I don't know why, but that just doesn't feel like what happened. I never saw anything like this again, and I'm honestly just searching for an explanation, so anything you can provide would be greatly accepted. So, what is it do you think that I saw? This just in, Swamp Dweller has hit 50,000 subscribers. Now maybe, he can drink 50,000 shots of bleach. I just want to congratulate Swamp Dweller on reaching 50,000 subscribers. It's not really surprising since he puts out videos every other day. They're like 30 plus minutes long. He really doesn't have a life. He spends all his time working on his YouTube channel 24-7. When he's not doing that, he's stirring up something on Twitter. He always accuses me of being jealous because I have a bigger subscriber count, but our view count is pretty much the same. But uh, I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous. <laughs> I'm not jealous. <laughs> Who do you think you are, Swamp? Coming onto the scene, you and your crack addict upload output and your fluent reading skills. Who do you think you are, buddy? You're making the rest of us look bad. I first met Swamp when I was 13 years old. He saved me from a crack overdose at my first Swamp rave. I guess you could say he's not always gay. <laughs> Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. Thank you guys very much for 50,000 subscribers. I never imagined we would amass this many people dwelling in the swamp. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy these tales of terror tonight. And much thanks to Unit 522. Southern Cannibal, and my good friend Joseph Sourless for helping me out with the intro. I saw something on Monday night that still has me totally shaken to my very core. I have always loved nature. I love the woods. I love hiking and camping, fishing, and everything else. I'm really into mycology. So, I'm out looking for mushrooms and various types of fungus whenever I get the chance. The weather was absolutely beautiful on Monday for this time of year. So towards the evening time, I decided to round up some of my walleye gear and head down to an old train trestle crossing on the Mahoning River in Niles, Ohio. I had parked my car about a mile and a half from the trestle so I could walk by the tracks and hit a few of the spots along the river on my way down there. By the time I reached the trestle, it was pretty much dark. I was wearing a headlamp at the time so I could see. At this location, there is a lake directly across the river, which the two are connected by a small, overhead dam. I was there for 15 minutes, when all of a sudden this overwhelming feeling of dread came over me. I switched my headlamp on to turn around to start back up the riverbank and right behind a big sycamore tree, I saw what looked to be a very, very large animal. It was kind of kneeling beside it and behind it. As I locked my eyes on it, I completely froze. 
I knew I was definitely seeing something there, but my mind couldn't process it. What was I looking at? It didn't make any sense. The thing that I kept saying to myself is, animals aren't supposed to look like that. Right as I'm thinking this, it's as if this thing read my mind, stood up, and made itself perfectly visible in the most pretentious way possible. It almost had this vibe like, Yeah, now you see me, you know I'm real and I definitely exist. What are you going to do about it? As soon as it happened, it kind of hunched over and made its way into the brush. It was out of there in like a flash. As soon as my feet hit the tracks, I ran, and I ran the entire way back to my car without stopping. By the time I reached my car, I couldn't breathe. Both my legs were locked up. I was vomiting, and somewhere in between the encounter and running away, I had pissed myself. It's early Friday morning now, and I think I've only slept for about six or seven hours altogether. I've been consistently searching YouTube and all kinds of stuff, listening to eyewitness accounts, and it sounds like these things are encountered quite often. I've heard of the Dogman before, but never really took it seriously, before the night of this encounter anyway. I would always picture a Dogman to look like a skittish coyote looking creature man. I love the woods and I love nature. The woods for me have always been a safe haven that I could venture into to escape stress. Stress at work, bills, relationships, etc. I could always take a nice long hike, go fishing or foraging and come home feeling 75% better. Now. I feel like I was threatened and kicked out of my second home. The only thing I can do is just try to understand what it was. I am open to a lot of things and was not at all skeptical when my friend told me that she saw a shapeshifter on the local reservation near where she lives. She delivers newspapers, and I helped her out for a month after she had some surgery done. We would walk and talk about folklore and the customs and traditions because I've always been interested in that sort of thing, but never knew much about this particular tribe due to a lot of different things. She would tell me about seeing this big black dog on occasion, and when she would blink or look away and then look back, it would be a woman. Always the same woman just different ages. If it was anyone else telling me this, I would have thought it was a trick of the light or being tired or etc. But from her, I believed it. One night, when I was with her, we put up to a man and woman. We always offer papers to the homeless or people walking around because we always offer papers to the homeless or people walking around because you'd be amazed at how happy some people get just by the gesture of it alone. They both accepted the paper and when the woman grabbed hers, my friend teased and I just froze. She was very nice in the 10 second interaction we had, but it was almost like she had sent a tendril of energy up my friend's arm and around the cab of the truck as if to say, I know you know, but don't mess with me. But not in a menacing manner, just a pretty much like a warning shot of a gun. After they had walked away, we were heading up my road and my friend had stated that she was the wolf woman, and if I had felt that she did, and I nodded to her. We spent the next hour in silence, still feeling it roll through us. My friend got the full brunt of it, and I'm sure that I got a pretty power pull kickback as well. It was like a light electricity arcing and dancing from nerve to nerve, creating goosebumps and shivers on occasion. It wasn't overall a bad experience at all, Rather the opposite, just not really something you'd expect to happen as casually as it did. I really miss going out on that route. Always something interesting, but that was the first time in a long time that I was reminded of the universe's being bigger than we think it is. I used to work 30 miles away from where I live. One night. I have been stuck in heavy traffic coming home. I take Lasix, so after a while, I really had to go to the bathroom. I kept telling myself that I was almost home and tried to hold it until I got there. By the time I got to my exit, I knew I wasn't going to make it to my house, so I pulled up to an area where Fidelity Investments is located 
and found an area that was isolated. This area is heavily wooded with walking trails and a lot of game, but it is also in a very populated area. I pulled up a little side drive off of one of the main roads. The little drive is about 100 feet long with only room for one car. It went up in elevation and had bushes on the right side facing the main road. On the left side, there was a guardrail and a view of the valley below. The area up there is huge and isolated with several buildings that are all spaced out. The place is dark at night because there are intermittent streets lit up up there. At night, it's pretty deserted too. A few cars go through that area, though, because it's a shortcut people use to go from Taylor Mill over to 3L Highway, where there are stores, restaurants, etc. When you're up there, you're above everything around this area. When I stopped, I got out of my car, waited a moment and looked around, to make sure there were no other cars. It was winter, so the bushes between where I was and the road below me didn't have many leaves on them. Because of that, you could see right through them. I was up on this little rise about 20 or 30 feet above the drive, which was four lanes wide. To the left of me was a street light and more woods that went down another hill to the main road. I went to the back of my car and did what I had to do. When I finished, I stood up and all at once, every hair on my body stood up. I knew I wasn't alone. I scanned the area in front of me and must have heard something behind me because I turned around and there were three deer standing there, all huddled up together between my car and guardrail. They were looking at me. They were looking across the road and I looked back over there and that was when I saw a figure standing between the bushes in front of it and the tree line behind it. It was huge. I stand at 5'5". Five five. Some of those bushes were about 6 feet tall but they only came up to about the collarbone area on this thing. Due to the streetlight, to the right of it, about 20 feet away, I was able to get a pretty clean outline of his thing. It had a large dog-shaped head and pointed ears. I couldn't make out his neck, but I could make out massive shoulders. That's when it growled. It was of deep vibration. I could feel it in my chest. My body just took over at that point. I have to explain part of it to you. I worked security for years in California in the music business. As a woman, I have to really work out and train to defend myself. I kickboxed for eight years and worked out every day. I also trained dogs, mainly Anatolian Shepherds and German Shepherds. Sometimes I have to establish who's the alpha and to do that, I get them down hold them into place and grab them by their ear and growl until they submit. Then, the training can start. So when this thing growled at me, it was just pure instinct. I dropped down to a crouching position and growled, right back at it. When I did that, it stopped growling and started sniffing the air. The snout went up and it turned its head slightly as it was sniffing. Then, it took a few steps forward. I was still crouched down on all fours and moved forward still growling at the thing. When I did that, it stopped. I stood up and kept staring right at it. I never broke eye contact with it. Then, it slowly stepped back into the tree line until I couldn't make it out as clearly as before, and it started to move to the right of me. The deer were still behind me. They were so close, I could have reached out and touched them. I waved my arms and told them to get out of there. When I did that, they went back over to the guardrail and took off down the hill. That's when I jumped in my car and got out of there as fast as I could. I felt that this thing was trying to circle behind me and I wasn't going to wait around for it to do that. Do I think I scared it? No, not at all. But I do think I confused it for a couple of minutes and that gave me time to move. I told my husband about what happened up there, but I didn't tell him exactly what I saw. He would think I was nuts and to be honest, I thought I was a little crazy myself until I saw a picture of one of these things that people call a dog man. I know there are other things in this world that can't be explained, I've seen them, but this was beyond any of those things. Since this has happened, I can't take that shortcut through that area anymore. My husband took me back over there once, and I was freaking out and begging to leave the whole time. I thought I was going to throw up. 
the wildlife up there has almost totally disappeared. I've never seen anything like this. There's nothing up in the hills anymore. The street I live on is only about a mile or so down the hill from this place, and lately, we've seen coyotes on the streets. Like they have been chased out and pets here have started to go missing. We've also seen a large black figure moving through our backyards down here. The dogs drive the neighborhood go crazy regularly now. People were calling the cops when we saw that large, black figure jumping fences. I'm concerned that it has come down the hill after eating everything up there. My grandfather told me the story when I was a teenager. I'm 52 now. My granddad grew up in the woods of central New Brunswick, in a very remote area, where only survivalists go now. Their whole family lived out in the sticks, and they lived by hunting, fishing, trapping, and some logging. Granddad said, when he was a teenager, he and his older brother, Duke, were up in the early hours checking trap lines on an old motorbike. It was early fall, and there was frost on the grass. It was early in the morning mist, and they still hung around the forest edges. He was still rolling cigarettes with his brother, and they were out of matches, so they dipped a bit of cloth and gasoline and ignited the coil wire. While Duke kicked the bike over. The sound of the bike being kicked over without an ignition is sort of like an animal call. That's how my granddad described it. Anyways, just as they started smoking their cigarettes, my grandfather noticed something bounding through the tree line toward them. My granddad said it ran up in a way a bear did, but it stopped several yards away from them and stood up, on its hind legs. It was still too far to tell what it was, but they assumed it was a black bear because they were very common in New Brunswick. That's when it began walking upright towards them. As it got nearer, Grandad said it looked like a huge werewolf. His family origin was German, so this was not unknown. It got as close as 20 feet away from them and then began to eye them closely. It sniffed their smokes and then turned and hopped and ran back to the trees. Grandad said they were not scared. He said they were only shocked that such a creature was living in the woods. Grandad said it was taller than any man and had a huge head, evil eyes, long, upright ears, hands with long claws, and had hair all over its body. I can't remember what color he said the fur was, but he said it had wolf-like legs. After a stressful day at work, I had gone over to a friend's apartment to shoot the breeze, eat some food, and play a few games on my friend's PS4. It was getting late and I had to be up fairly early the next day. My friend walked me to the parking lot to my car. There was no one else in the parking lot, just us two. As I was unlocking my car, a dog walked out from the side of a nearby building, about 25 feet away. It came fully into view and stopped to look at us. It was a little bigger than a standard Great Dane. It was all black with long hair that appeared to be falling out in clumps. It had long ears and a long, scraggly tail. I remember making eye contact with it. It had dark maroon colored eyes, and in the moment we locked eyes, it smiled at us. But instead of a dog's lips going up and back, the lips went slightly sideways and I saw white, human teeth. I recall suddenly getting a feeling of dread and fear. I felt like it was something disguised as a dog and pretending to be a dog. But it wasn't a dog, I'm certain of it. The energy coming off this thing didn't feel dog-like. I don't know how else to describe it, but my hair went up on end. It turned around from us and began limping slowly back around the corner from where it had stepped out from. It seemed to have most of its weight on its front legs walking with a hunched back, and then it was limping away. I noticed its rear left foot was wrapped in a blue gauze, and it looked very odd. The heel was actually parallel to the ground. 
I'm unsure if my friend saw exactly what I saw, but she suddenly said, It's leaving. Let's follow it. And she ran after the damn thing, after it disappeared around the corner. I remember being scared for my friend, so I went sprinting after her. I rounded the corner to find my friend looking around confused. The dog thing was gone. At the rate that it was walking and limping, and given the close proximity to us, which again was no more than 25 feet, there was no way that it could have disappeared that quickly. The air was suddenly extremely cold, even for South Texas in January. My teeth were chattering and I told my friend to quickly go back to her apartment, lock the door and stay inside. I warned her that that thing was not a dog and told her that I'd text her when I got home. Once safe at home, I texted my friend and thought that everything was going to be okay and that would be the end of it. But even as I settled into bed, my heart was racing. It didn't help that at around 12 a.m. there was a low whistling right outside my window. My neighbor's house isn't too far from mine, but they're good people and there is no logical reason for them to be that close to my window at night, whistling. I didn't make any indication that I was aware of the whistling. It wasn't even musical, just the sort of whistle when someone is trying to get the attention of somebody else. Eventually, the whistling stopped and I heard nothing else. I had trouble sleeping. I haven't seen anything or experienced anything like that since. And my big question is, what was that thing? For a couple of months, I was hanging out with an online community that often had lots of anonymous users and registered users speak about paranormal experiences, being scared and asking for advice. Obviously, some were intentionally fake, and some were real or the user thought it was real. Most of the topics were about I think this person might be a werewolf, vampire, etc, etc. Or I think I saw a shadow person, fairies, ghosts, and Slenderman. I often tried my best to give realistic explanations, while at the same time giving them suggestions for what they claimed was 100% true. So quite often, I researched common complaints to find out more about the supposed monsters or creatures. And then I came upon the Tulpa Effect explanation for Slenderman being possibly real. Personally, I think the Tulpa Effect is BS. For if it could really create an entity based on belief, where is the Abrahamic God? As in why isn't he interacting a lot more with people? So I was pondering, what if the Topo effect was real and Slender Man was powered by it? What would simply not believing in him do to him? And a few days later, I was still pondering. It was late, probably about 12am, so I thought it was time for bed. I have a presentation I have to give tomorrow. I definitely don't want to be sleep deprived. Though, as I was laying in bed, I was just getting a weird feeling from my window, almost as if something was following me. I couldn't see anything at the time, it was too dark, and I wasn't about to get up to check it out, so I continued to try to sleep. After a few minutes later, my eyes are open, and I see Slender Man in my room. I say to its face, or lack thereof, you aren't real, and then start to think as strong as I can about him not being real. So at this point, he turns into a black mist and starts to choke me. Things go black, and then the next thing I know I am unconscious. Or so I thought. I looked around my room and saw nothing there, but the dread remained. I am not sure what happened next, though I remember waking up again. At this point, I am concerned since I am logically thinking that this is just a dream, but I don't know what's going on and I am having these weird seemingly random blackouts at and awakenings. So I go to the washroom and then back to my bed to sleep. I think Slender Man appeared again, but this time a woman appeared and drove him off, almost as if it was scared of her. I didn't get a good look at her, so all I know is that her hair was black as black can be. She ended up grabbing my back as I laid in bed and held me. It felt like she was trying to shelter me, almost like when a parent holds their child in bed 
trying to make them feel safe. I think I ended up falling asleep during that. Later that night, I woke up again, and there was something eating a snack. I think some other weird stuff happened with a few more awakenings and false awakenings, but it was just plain weird. I have literally no clue what happened that night. There is only one thing I can't confirm, is that I was actually awake, and especially when I went and got a snack, since there was a wrapper left behind, but aside from that, I honestly can't say for certain what was a dream and what wasn't. I live on an acreage, and to get home I have to drive down the main road past farms, subdivisions, and other acreages. It was a month and a half ago in August that I was driving home from work at midnight. In one of those ditches, when I was maybe about 500 meters away, my high beams illuminated a wolf's head and eyes. It was moving slightly, as though it were eating something or sniffing for something but my lights didn't show me what. We have coyotes out where we live, and everyone has dogs, but the coyotes are too cowardly to be that close to the road, and a few people let their dogs roam loose at night. Most importantly, it was too big for a coyote or a dog. It was even too big for a wolf. It looked like the size of a bear. As I got closer, it stood up to about the height of a man, maybe a little taller, and moved towards me. At this point, I passed it at 100 kilometers and didn't look back, too scared to try and to think of what it really was. This sighting was only about 3 kilometers from my house, so I noped inside the moment I pulled into the driveway. I am fully convinced I saw a werewolf. The location was in the middle of Alberta, in Strathcona County, which is east of Edmonton. This was about a year ago. A few details out of the way first. I was living on 44 acres of mountain land. There are several buildings on the property, but the main two are currently my parents' house and their guest house. They are only 20 feet apart, or about the distance of a single lane gravel road. I was in my parents' house, cooking something. My house was the guest house. It doesn't have a kitchen or anything, so I used my parents' house for cooking and showering and stuff. No one but myself was living on the property at the time. Okay, to the story. I was cooking. I had heard the house shake. I'm not sure how to otherwise explain it, but it sounded like the corner of the house shook. Kind of like a dog just shook off after getting out of the water. Well, coincidentally, there is a creek right next to the house. So I walk into the living room from the kitchen, on my way out the front door to check what's going on. I don't see anything. I looked outside and didn't hear anything moving. I was about to close the door and the cat comes in. Huh, strange I thought. But at the same time, I didn't phase me too much because it's a cat. They come in and out at all hours of the day. Well, sooner than later my food was done and I wanted to go back to my house so I could watch TV. As I was walking across the road, I noticed a figure to my left. So I turn to look at it, and there stands this five foot tall, ears stood straight up and were about shoulder high on me, and I'm 5'11", German Shepherd. It was standing regular, like a dog would, but its eyes glowed red. It was a complete silhouette of an animal, so I didn't see any features, but it had the build of a German Shepherd. It didn't move, it just stared at me, ten feet away from me. I darted into my house to grab my shotgun, and I came back outside to find that it was gone. No sign. No sounds. Nothing. It was just gone. I fired off a couple rounds in case it was still around somewhere off, but it was gone. My parents want me to believe it was a coyote, 
Coyotes aren't built that beefy, and this thing was freaking huge, and buff, like pit bull bred to kill buff. Most accurate description of the animal that I can think of was glowing red eyes, vertical pointed ears, a thick head, round like a pit bull but German shepherd shape, a thick body. I couldn't see anything below the chest, I was too focused on the eyes, but it did look like it had legs that was standing on the ground and it was unnaturally still. Me and a group of around 5 or 6 friends and family, all older teens who were camping overnight at a private campground on a small lake in the Kettle Moraine State Forest region of Washington County, Wisconsin. The year was approximately 1970 in midsummer. The nearest town was Coaxum. It was very rural farmland mixed with deciduous and pine forests. We chose to relocate our campsite a little bit further from the main campground in a secluded, natural, practically circular clearing. We liked the spot because of the unusual shape and the fact that it contained a sort of carved out depression in the center. Here we wished to build a fire and hang out. The sun began to set as we built our fire, roasting hot dogs and singing. Someone happened to remark upon the primordial setting and how we resembled a group of ancient peoples who have done just what we were doing thousands of years ago. Time passed and the hour was 10 p.m. So we began to exchange spooky stories. The sky was very clear and there was an abundance of shooting stars. Also, the moon was bright so we could actually see quite a bit of what was going on around us. There were crickets, of course, but no other folks were around, only us. Suddenly, from off in the distance in the woods, we heard the sound of something coming towards us, breathing heavily. This area had long ago become devoid of any large wild animals. Pieces of wood were crackling and breaking as it walked. We could hear large trudging footsteps in the underbrush in a loud, snarling, huffing, puffing, breathing sound. It did not sound like an animal, but more human. Soon, we also heard twigs snapping in the creature, whatever it was, getting closer and closer to the edge of the woods and nearing our clearing. It let out several blood-curdling growls and was so close we were terrified. That was all it did. That's all it took for us to be shaken. We gathered up all of our gear and ran out of there as fast as we could so the creature could not get us. It really was trying to chase us out of its spot, I believe. None of us slept the entire night. I have been in camping situations where young men try to scare you, but they were usually in groups or drunk and end up showing themselves. This was one creature against several of us and it showed no fear. I am sorry to say that we did not get a solid glimpse. At the time, everyone knew about Bigfoot, so we assume that's what we encountered. We talked about it, but never found out what was actually out there, until I heard of the research on something called Dogman. Could this possibly have been the man dog? Let me know what you think. I want to tell you about an incident that happened in Northern California about 10 years ago. I did not see this. I interviewed the woman and her son about the sighting and an eyewitness that did not know her or her son. This happened about the same time that there were a lot of chupacabra sightings elsewhere. The middle-aged woman, with her 16-year-old son, was driving in her new, to them, used car. It was a convertible. They live in the foothills of the High Sierras, at about 2,500 feet elevation. They were going to the store. She and her son were driving from their home, down the only mountain road towards town. The road drops off to the left into the canyon, and dropped down from the road at 1,800 feet. On the right is a trail, then tapers off the canyon to the west. She suddenly saw what she called the dog from hell. She described it 
as the ugliest and the weirdest looking dog she ever saw. It was black and the dog's neck was two feet long between his head and shoulders. I named it the snake dog. I reported this to other people and at the time I did not have any photographs so I did not go any further. She said as fast as it appeared it had gone to the right of her car and disappeared. The car was going no more than about 35 miles per hour. She swerved her car to the left to avoid hitting it. The car swung around and now was going backwards toward the side of the road. As it shot off the road and over the canyon, the car flipped over upside down. They had their seatbelts on. The car flew out at about 100 feet. It landed upside down about 90 feet down and sloped in canyon wall. She said, that's when they hit the ground. They heard the sound of breaking glass. When all of the movement had stopped, they were both alive. Still upside down, the engine was still running. She reached for the ignition key and it turned off the engine. The only injury was her. Son, Sean had a scratch on the back of his hand. They both crawled out from under the car after releasing their seatbelts. By that time, help was arriving. You could not see the crashed car from the road going either direction. It turned out that the car behind them witnessed the whole event. The driver happened to have a cell phone and called for help. I talked with that driver and confirmed the whole story. That driver had also seen the snake dog, but by then it was gone and had not been seen again. So what do you think? Have you ever heard of any creature that looked like this alleged snake dog? I just wanted to say that for one month only, I have exclusive Swamp Dweller Summer merch. You can get t-shirts and tank tops, but after that month, I will no longer print this design. I do have some new designs coming as well this summer that you can get, so be sure to jump on that and get this exclusive summer design.